Hey folks, I know I am just an old guy telling stories, but please leave a like and subscribe before we start. Let's enjoy in today's stories. Before I dive into today's stories, I want to say, disclaimer, the content presented in this video is purely for entertainment purposes. The theories discussed are speculative and are not supported by concrete evidence. They are not intended to be taken as factual information. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey Reddit, I've got a story to share that's been haunting me for weeks now. I'm not even sure why I'm writing this, maybe to get it off my chest, maybe to warn someone, or maybe just to see if anyone else has had a similar experience. I'm 26, and when I'm not driving for Uber, I've got this strange hobby of diving into the dark web. Yeah, I know it sounds cliche and stupid, but there's something about the anonymity and the sheer mystery of it that keeps drawing me back. It's like exploring a forbidden library where each book is a glimpse into the most hidden corners of the human psyche. It all started a few years ago when I was introduced to the concept by a friend. He showed me how to access it using Tor and I was hooked. Most of the time it's just a bunch of weird forums, marketplaces selling God knows what, and conspiracy theory websites. I never buy anything or interact much. I'm more of an observer. I know there are risks, but I've always been careful, or at least I thought I was. A typical night for me after a long shift driving people around is to come home, grab a beer, and fire up my laptop. The dark web is like my late night TV. It's my way to unwind. I know it sounds twisted, but there's something about the dark underbelly of the internet that fascinates me. You see the worst and the weirdest of humanity, but also the most hidden truths, or at least what some people claim to be truths. One night after a particularly grueling day, I decided to do my usual routine. The rides were relentless, filled with drunk party goers, awkward conversations, and the never ending smell of fast food lingering in my car. By the time I got home, I was exhausted. I cracked open a cold one, fired up my laptop and went deeper into the web than I usually do. I wasn't looking for anything specific, just surfing, clicking random links and seeing where they took me. About half an hour in, I stumbled upon a blog that stood out. It was different from the usual conspiracy junk and scammy looking sites. The design was simplistic, almost clinical, and the title was in bold red letters, Project Lucid, The Military's Darkest Secret. My curiosity peaked instantly. I had heard rumors about the military experimenting with all sorts of bizarre stuff, but lucid dreaming? This was new. The blog claimed to be an insider's account of a classified military project focused on lucid dreaming. I should have clicked away right then, but I didn't. Instead, I started reading, and what I found was more disturbing than anything I had ever come across on the dark web before. The story was detailed filled with jargon and references to military protocols that seemed legitimate. It wasn't like your typical poorly written creepypasta. This felt real. Too real. The author, who claimed to be an ex-military scientist, wrote about how the project started with noble intentions. They wanted to enhance soldiers' training through controlled dreaming. Imagine learning combat techniques in your sleep, perfecting strategies without the physical strain. It sounded incredible, almost too good to be true. But as I read on, the tone shifted from scientific curiosity to something much darker and more sinister. The deeper I got into the blog, the more unsettling the details became. There were mentions of psychological breakdowns, unexplained disappearances, and even deaths. The project, codenamed Dreamscape, had apparently gone off the rails, leading to horrifying consequences for those involved. I was hooked and horrified, unable to stop reading. That night marked the beginning of a rabbit hole I wish I had never gone down. Each entry in the blog was more chilling than the last, filled with descriptions of experiments that sounded like something out of a horror movie. But it wasn't just the content that got to me. It was the way it was written. The author's fear and paranoia seeped through every word, making it hard to dismiss as mere fiction. I'll share more in the next parts, but for now, I need a break. 
Just thinking about it gives me chills. If you're into this sort of stuff, stick around. There's a lot more to this story, and it only gets darker from here. After a long day of driving for Uber, dealing with the usual mix of passengers and the constant drone of the city, I was more than ready to unwind. My car reeked of stale fast food and spilled drinks, and my nerves were frayed from the ceaseless small talk. By the time I got home, it was nearly midnight. I sank into my worn out couch, grabbed a beer from the fridge, and powered up my laptop. It was time for my usual ritual of dark web exploration. Scrolling through the dark web has always been a peculiar solace for me. It's like sifting through a twisted digital archive of humanity's most secret and bizarre obsessions. That night, I wasn't looking for anything specific, just the usual thrill of the unknown. I clicked through various links, each one taking me deeper into the abyss. The clock ticked past 1 a.m. as I ventured further into the shadowy corners of the internet. About 30 minutes into my browsing, I stumbled upon something that immediately grabbed my attention. The link was buried within a forum dedicated to conspiracy theories. It was unassuming, just a simple text hyperlink that read, Project Lucid, the military's darkest secret. The name alone sent a shiver down my spine. I clicked on it without hesitation. The page that loaded was stark and minimalist, almost sterile. The title was emblazoned across the top in bold red letters. Beneath it was a series of blog entries, each one meticulously dated and detailed. As I started reading, I realized this wasn't just another conspiracy theory. The writing was precise, filled with technical terms and references that felt disturbingly authentic. The first entry introduced the project, codenamed Dreamscape, and outlined its goals. The military had been experimenting with lucid dreaming, hoping to create a new form of training for soldiers. The idea was to use lucid dreams as a way to perfect combat techniques, strategies, and even language skills, all within the safety of one's own mind. It sounded revolutionary, almost too good to be true, and as with anything that sounds too good to be true, there was a dark side. The blog's author, who claimed to be an ex-military scientist, described how the project started with high hopes and rigorous scientific protocols. The initial tests showed promising results. Soldiers were able to achieve lucid dreaming states more reliably, and their dream-based training seemed to translate into real-world skills. But it wasn't long before things began to unravel. The deeper I delved into the blog, the more unsettling the details became. The lucid dreaming experiments were not without their side effects. Soldiers reported experiencing intense nightmares, sleep paralysis, and disturbing hallucinations. Some even started to lose their grip on reality, unable to distinguish between their dreams and waking life. The line between the two blurred in the most terrifying ways. One entry described a soldier who had been a star subject in the early phases of the project. He was able to control his dreams with remarkable precision, mastering complex maneuvers and combat techniques. But then he began to suffer from vivid, recurring nightmares. He claimed that in his dreams, he was being hunted by shadowy figures, faceless and relentless. The nightmares grew worse, invading his waking hours. He became paranoid convinced that the figures were following him in real life. His mental state deteriorated rapidly, and he was eventually discharged from the project. The blog hinted that he had disappeared shortly after. I was hooked, unable to tear my eyes away from the screen. Each entry painted a picture of a project spiraling out of control, with increasingly dire consequences for the soldiers involved. The author's tone grew more frantic with each post, his fear palpable through the words. He detailed how the project leaders ignored the warning signs, pushing forward in their quest for success. As the night wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread settling over me. The more I read, the more I felt like I was being watched, like the shadows in my room were growing darker and more oppressive. The words on the screen seemed to pulse with a life of their own, dragging me deeper into the nightmare that was Project Lucid. I finally forced myself to stop reading around 3 a.m. 
My heart was racing and my hands were trembling. I closed my laptop, but the images and words from the blog lingered in my mind. I tried to sleep, but my dreams were haunted by faceless figures and endless dark corridors. It was as if the blog had infected my subconscious, planting seeds of fear that took root and grew in the fertile soil of my imagination. Despite the unease that had settled in my mind, I couldn't resist diving back into the blog the next evening. There was something about the story that compelled me to continue, like a moth drawn to a flame. I opened my laptop, navigated back to the dark web, and found the blog again. I resumed reading, eager and anxious to uncover what happened next in Project Lucid. The entries that followed delved deeper into the methods used by the military to induce lucid dreaming. According to the author, the researchers had developed a special medicine, a cocktail of substances designed to enhance the brain's ability to achieve and maintain a lucid dreaming state. The concoction was a closely guarded secret, its exact composition known only to a handful of top scientists within the project. The initial results were promising. Soldiers who took the medicine reported a significant increase in their ability to control their dreams. They could manipulate the dream environment, practice complex tasks, and even simulate combat scenarios with startling clarity. It was like having a virtual reality training program inside their heads. The military was thrilled with the progress, seeing limitless potential in this new form of training. However, the blog also detailed the darker side of these experiments. While the medicine enhanced lucid dreaming, it also had unforeseen side effects. Some soldiers began to experience prolonged episodes of sleep paralysis, a condition where they were awake but unable to move, often accompanied by terrifying hallucinations. They described feeling a heavy weight on their chest as if someone or something was sitting on them, watching them with unseen eyes. Other soldiers reported vivid, almost lifelike nightmares. These dreams were so intense that they left psychological scars, blurring the line between reality and the dream world. One entry told the story of a soldier named Mark, who had been an exemplary participant in the early phases of the project. Mark's lucid dreams were so clear and controlled that he became the poster child for Project Lucid's success. But then, things took a turn for the worse. Mark began to dream about a dark, endless forest. No matter what he did, he couldn't escape it. Every night, he found himself wandering through the twisted trees, hearing whispers and seeing fleeting shadows just beyond his field of vision. The dreams became increasingly distressing, leaving him exhausted and paranoid during the day. He confided in his fellow soldiers and the project's scientists, but they dismissed his fears as mere side effects of the medicine. Mark's condition deteriorated rapidly. He started to confuse his dreams with reality, waking up screaming and disoriented, convinced that the shadows from his dreams had followed him into the waking world. Despite his pleas, the project leaders continued to administer the medicine, determined to push forward. One night, Mark didn't wake up. The blog post hinted at his fate, suggesting that he had slipped into a coma, lost somewhere between the dream world and reality. Reading about Mark sent chills down my spine, the blog entries became more frantic, with the author describing how more and more soldiers were succumbing to similar fates. The medicine that had once been hailed as a breakthrough was now seen as a curse, trapping its users in a nightmarish limbo. The project was spiraling out of control, and the scientists were at a loss, unable to reverse the damage they had caused. The author's desperation was palpable. He recounted how he had tried to warn his superiors to shut down the project before more lives were ruined. But his warnings fell on deaf ears. The military was too invested in the potential benefits to acknowledge the growing body count. The blog ended abruptly, with the author hinting that he was being watched and that his life might be in danger for revealing these secrets. I closed my laptop, feeling a heavy weight settle in my chest. The story was too bizarre, too horrifying to be true, yet it was written with such conviction and detail that I couldn't dismiss it outright. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was some kernel of truth buried in the madness, and I knew I had to keep digging, 
to find out what really happened to the soldiers of Project Lucid. The next night, I found myself unable to resist the pull of the blog. Despite the growing dread that gnawed at my insides, I had to know more. I fired up my laptop, navigating back to the dark web, and resumed reading the entries of Project Lucid. This time, the focus shifted to an even more unsettling aspect of the experiments, astral projection. According to the blog, the military's foray into lucid dreaming had inadvertently opened a doorway to this phenomenon. For the uninitiated, astral projection is the supposed ability to consciously leave one's physical body and travel in a spirit form, exploring the world, or even other realms. At first, the project's leaders were thrilled. They saw astral projection as the ultimate espionage tool. Imagine being able to gather intelligence without ever leaving the safety of a secure facility. Soldiers trained in lucid dreaming began to report experiences where they felt themselves floating above their bodies, able to move freely through space and even pass through walls. The military was eager to harness this newfound ability. The blog described in chilling detail how soldiers were encouraged to explore their astral selves. They were given specific targets to observe and report back on. Initially, the results were astonishing. Soldiers returned with detailed descriptions of far-off places, conversations overheard, and layouts of enemy compounds all seemingly verified by subsequent intelligence. But as with the earlier phases of the project, the success was short-lived. The author recounted how soldiers started to encounter strange, malevolent entities during their astral travels. These entities, described as shadowy figures or dark presences, seemed to be aware of the soldiers' intrusions into their realm. Encounters with these beings often left the soldiers deeply shaken, their mental states deteriorating rapidly. One particularly harrowing entry detailed the experience of a soldier named Tom. Tom had been one of the project's most successful subjects, mastering lucid dreaming and astral projection with ease. One night he was tasked with observing a remote military installation. During his astral journey, he felt an overwhelming sense of dread as if he were being watched. Suddenly, he was confronted by a towering shadow figure, its form shifting and roiling like smoke. The figure reached out, and Tom felt a searing pain that jolted him back to his physical body. Tom awoke screaming, clutching his chest. He described the encounter in vivid detail, convinced that the shadow figure had followed him back. From that night on, Tom was plagued by horrific nightmares and waking hallucinations. He saw the shadow figure everywhere, in mirrors, in the corners of his room, even reflected in the eyes of his comrades. His health declined rapidly, and within weeks he slipped into a coma from which he never awoke. The blog was filled with similar accounts. Soldiers who had once been confident and composed were reduced to fearful shells of their former selves. Many of them experienced vivid, recurring nightmares where they were pursued by the shadow figures. Some described feeling a constant oppressive presence as if they were never truly alone. The most disturbing part was that a significant number of these soldiers never woke up again. They remained in a comatose state, their minds seemingly trapped in the astral realm. The author of the blog was growing increasingly frantic. He described how the project's leaders continued to downplay the dangers, pushing forward with their experiments despite the mounting casualties. The medicine, once seen as a gateway to new possibilities, was now a harbinger of doom opening doors to places that humans were never meant to explore. As I read, a cold fear settled over me. The story was spiraling into madness, yet it was written with such conviction and detail that it was hard to dismiss. The idea that these soldiers were trapped in their own minds, pursued by malevolent entities, was terrifying. The notion that the military had willingly continued these experiments despite the obvious dangers was even more chilling. The blog ended with a dire warning. The author pleaded with readers to stay away from the medicine, from the idea of lucid dreaming for military purposes. He warned that the dark web was full of secrets that were never meant to be uncovered, and that some doors, once opened, could never be closed. I closed my laptop, my mind racing. The story had taken a turn into the truly horrifying 
and I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to it than just a wild conspiracy theory. The dark web was a place where anyone could post anything, but this felt different. The fear and desperation in the author's words were too real to ignore. I woke up the next morning feeling a sense of dread that I couldn't shake. The story I had read haunted my thoughts, casting a dark shadow over everything I did. The blog had left me with more questions than answers, and I felt an overwhelming urge to dig deeper, to find out if there was any truth to the terrifying claims made by the author. Over the next few days, I scoured the dark web for any additional information on Project Lucid. I visited forums, read through countless conspiracy theories, and even reached out to a few contacts who were more knowledgeable about the murkier parts of the internet. Most of what I found was the usual mix of paranoia and fantasy, but there were a few threads that seemed to corroborate parts of the blog story. One forum post, buried deep within a thread on military experiments, mentioned a project that sounded eerily similar to Dreamscape. The poster claimed to be a former soldier, who had heard rumors about a top-secret program involving lucid dreaming and mind control. He spoke of comrades who had mysteriously disappeared and strange medical treatments that left participants changed in unsettling ways. While it wasn't definitive proof, it was enough to keep me hooked. I began to piece together a picture of what might have happened. The military, always on the lookout for new ways to gain an edge, had stumbled upon the potential of lucid dreaming. They had pushed the boundaries of what was possible, using a combination of drugs and psychological conditioning to enhance their soldiers' abilities. But in their quest for superiority, they had opened doors that were better left closed, doors that led to dark and dangerous places. The more I read, the more I began to realize that the truth might never be fully known. The dark web is a place where reality and fiction blend seamlessly, where anyone can post anything, and where the most outlandish stories can sometimes have a kernel of truth. It was entirely possible that Project Lucid was a fabrication, a complex and detailed work of fiction designed to entertain and scare. But it was also possible that it was real, that the military had indeed dabbled in areas that were beyond their understanding with horrifying consequences. As I reflected on everything I had learned, I felt the need to share a disclaimer both for myself and anyone else who might stumble upon the story. The dark web is a treacherous place filled with misinformation and danger. It's easy to get lost in the shadows, to believe in the most terrifying tales, but it's crucial to remember that not everything you read is true. Conspiracy theories can be compelling, but they are often just that, theories. In the end, I decided to take a step back from the dark web. The story of Project Lucid had shaken me deeply, making me question my own fascination with the hidden and the unknown. I realized that some things are better left undiscovered, some doors better left unopened. The dark web had shown me a glimpse of a world that was both fascinating and frightening, and I wasn't sure I wanted to venture any further into its depths. To anyone reading this, I urge caution. The internet is a vast and mysterious place, and the dark web is its most enigmatic and dangerous part. Whether Project Lucid is real or not, the fear it inspired in me was very real. Sometimes it's better to let the shadows remain shadows and to find peace in the light of day. As for me, I've gone back to my regular life, driving for Uber and trying to forget the horrors I read about. But every now and then, when I'm alone at night, I can't help but think about the soldiers who might still be out there, trapped in their dreams hunted by shadows. Also now, I am scared to try to lucid dream. I was trying to do it as well. I mean, no medications or whatever. But I really wanted to control my dreams. And of astral projection, I don't know if that thing is real, but it really scares me now. Before I finish, I have to mention this one more time. This is all just a conspiracy theory until it is proven. Anyone can write stuff like this. Viewer discretion is advised, or in this case, listener, I guess. Okay, enough from me. Thanks for listening. I've always been a curious person, the kind who gets lost in Wikipedia spirals at 3 a.m. 
digging through article after article about random, obscure topics. But it wasn't until I stumbled upon the dark web that I realized just how deep the rabbit hole could go. Now, before you judge, let me clarify. I wasn't looking for anything illegal or disturbing. My interest was purely academic, a quest for knowledge about the hidden corners of the internet that you won't find on Google. It all started one evening after work. I had been reading about various conspiracy theories on a popular forum, and one user mentioned the dark web as a place where the real conspiracies were discussed. Intrigued, I decided to explore. I had heard about Tor and how it could be used to access the dark web, so I downloaded it and began my journey. The first thing that struck me was how different the dark web was from the surface web. It was eerily quiet, with simple text-based websites and forums. No flashy ads or autoplay videos, just raw information. It felt like I had stepped into a forgotten library, one where the books were written in whispers. I spent hours sifting through various forums and websites, most of which were pretty mundane. There were marketplaces selling questionable goods, sure, but I steered clear of those. My goal was to find the hidden knowledge, the kind of stuff that would never make it to mainstream news. Eventually, I found a forum dedicated to conspiracy theories. This wasn't your typical fake moon landing or flat earth nonsense. These were detailed, well-researched posts about government experiments, hidden technologies, and secret societies. The users were anonymous, but they wrote with a conviction that was both compelling and unnerving. One night, I stumbled upon a thread titled Project Telekinesis, the government's best kept secret. The post was lengthy and meticulously detailed, claiming to reveal a top secret government experiment from the 1960s aimed at training people to develop telekinetic abilities. It sounded like something out of a science fiction novel, but the way it was written made it hard to dismiss outright. The author of the post, who went by the handle Watcher39, claimed to have uncovered declassified documents and first-hand accounts from individuals involved in the project. They described a facility hidden in the remote forests of Montana, where volunteers were subjected to rigorous training regimens designed to unlock the hidden potential of the human mind. I couldn't help but feel a chill run down my spine as I read through the details. It wasn't just the content of the post that was disturbing, but the possibility that there might be a kernel of truth to it. After all, history is replete with examples of government experiments that sound unbelievable, but turned out to be real. MK Ultra, anyone? Despite the creeping sense of unease, I was hooked. I needed to know more. Who were these volunteers? What kind of training did they undergo? And most importantly, what were the outcomes of the project? Over the next few days, I dove deeper into the forum, piecing together bits of information from various threads and users. The more I learned, the more unsettling the story became. The idea that the government might have been dabbling in something as fantastical as telekinesis was both thrilling and terrifying. Looking back, I realize how easily curiosity can lead you down paths you never intended to tread. What started as an innocent quest for knowledge was quickly turning into an obsession. My fascination with Project Telekinesis grew each day. The more I delved into the dark web forum, the more pieces of the puzzle I began to uncover. One evening, as I scrolled through the countless threads, I found a post by someone named Deep Dive 22. Their post promised to reveal previously hidden details about the telekinesis research from the 1960s. My heart raced as I clicked on the link. The post began with a brief introduction about the origins of the project. According to Deep Dive 22, it all started during the Cold War era when the U.S. government was desperately searching for ways to gain an edge over the Soviet Union. The project was known officially as MKUltra Subproject 69, a name that sent shivers down my spine. If even a fraction of what was written here was true, it meant that this was a part of the infamous MKUltra experiments that involved mind control and psychological manipulation. Deep Dive 22 provided a detailed account of how the project began, 
It was spearheaded by a shadowy government agency known as The Division, which specialized in unconventional warfare and psychological experiments. They recruited a team of scientists, psychologists, and military personnel to conduct the research. The goal was to harness the power of the human mind to manipulate objects without physical interaction, telekinesis. The forum post included excerpts from what were claimed to be declassified documents, although their authenticity was impossible to verify. One document, dated 1963, described the initial recruitment phase. Volunteers were sought from various backgrounds, military, civilian, even from psychiatric hospitals. They were promised substantial financial compensation and the opportunity to be part of a groundbreaking experiment. As I read on, I discovered that the recruitment process was highly selective. Candidates underwent rigorous psychological evaluations, physical exams, and background checks. Those who passed were taken to a remote facility in Montana, far from prying eyes. The facility was designed to be self-sufficient and completely isolated, ensuring that no information could leak out. The post included a grainy black and white photograph of the facility. It looked like a large, nondescript building surrounded by dense forest. The picture alone was enough to send a chill down my spine. It was eerie to think that such a place might have existed, hidden away from the world, conducting experiments that bordered on the fantastical. Once the volunteers arrived at the facility, they were stripped of their personal belongings and assigned numbers instead of names. This dehumanization was meant to break down their identities and make them more susceptible to the training. They were housed in small white rooms that were completely soundproof and devoid of any distractions. The isolation was intense, designed to force the mind to focus inward. Deep Dive 22 described the training regimen in excruciating detail. The volunteers were made to stare at objects placed on a pedestal in the center of their rooms. They were instructed to clear their minds and visualize the objects moving solely through the power of their thoughts. The sessions lasted for hours each day, and the volunteers were subjected to continuous observation by unseen handlers. To aid in their focus, the volunteers were given a drug referred to only as Compound X. The post was vague about the nature of this substance, but it was described as a powerful psychotropic designed to enhance mental concentration and reduce physical fatigue. The side effects, however, were severe. Hallucinations, paranoia, and in some cases, complete mental breakdown. Reading this, I felt a knot form in my stomach. The idea of people being subjected to such extreme conditions, all in the name of scientific discovery, was deeply unsettling. Yet I couldn't tear myself away from the story. It was like watching a car crash in slow motion. Horrifying, but impossible to look away from. The post concluded with a tantalizing hint that there was more to come. Deep Dive 22 promised to reveal the outcomes of the project in their next post, including the fate of the volunteers and whether any of them had actually developed telekinetic abilities. My obsession with Project Telekinesis grew stronger with each passing day. I eagerly awaited the next post from Deep Dive 22 hoping to uncover more about this mysterious and chilling experiment. Finally, the update arrived, shedding light on the unusual training process the volunteers endured. The training was as intense as it was strange. According to the latest post, the volunteers were completely isolated from one another, each confined to their own stark, white room. These rooms were designed to be sensory deprivation chambers, the walls, floors, and ceilings were padded to eliminate any noise, and the lighting was a harsh, continuous white that left no room for shadows or respite. The volunteers had no concept of time. Days and nights blended into one continuous, disorienting blur. Their only contact with the outside world was through a small, unmarked door where their meals were delivered. Meals consisted of a bland, nutrient-dense paste designed to sustain their physical health while providing no sensory pleasure. The lack of taste, smell, and texture further heightened their sensory deprivation, forcing their minds to turn inward. 
In the center of each room stood a single pedestal, upon which rested various objects. A pencil, a small rubber ball, a feather. The volunteers were instructed to focus on these objects, visualizing them moving through sheer force of will. The constant staring, combined with the isolation and deprivation, was intended to break down their mental barriers and unlock latent psychic abilities. The regimen was relentless. Each day, the volunteers were required to undergo hours of intense mental focus exercises. They were instructed to imagine the objects lifting, spinning, or floating. Their progress was meticulously monitored by scientists through hidden cameras and sensors embedded in the room. Compound X played a crucial role in this process. Administered daily, it was a blend of substances designed to heighten mental acuity and focus. The exact composition of the drug remained a mystery, but its effects were undeniable. Volunteers reported vivid dreams and heightened perception. Some even claimed to sense movements or changes in the objects in their rooms. Despite the rigorous training and the effects of Compound X, progress was slow. The majority of volunteers showed no signs of developing telekinetic abilities. The strain on their minds and bodies was immense. Many began to suffer from severe psychological distress, exhibiting symptoms of acute anxiety and depression. Some became withdrawn, others seemed lost in their own thoughts, and a few stared blankly at the objects before them without any sign of recognition or response. The post included excerpts from the journal of Dr. Evelyn Cartwright, one of the lead scientists on the project. Her entries revealed a growing sense of frustration and desperation. June 14, 1964. The subjects are not responding as expected. Their mental fortitude is breaking down faster than anticipated. Compound X shows promise, but the side effects are severe. We must push forward. Failure is not an option. As I read her words, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for both the volunteers and the scientists. They were all trapped in a challenging situation, driven by ambition, curiosity, and a relentless pursuit of the unknown. The post concluded with a revelation. Despite the overwhelming failure rate, one volunteer began to show promise. Identified only as Subject 23, this individual exhibited subtle but undeniable signs of telekinetic ability. Objects would shift slightly on the pedestal, and there were instances of the rubber ball levitating a few inches off the ground. The scientists were elated, believing they had finally found a breakthrough. But the price of this progress was high. Subject 23's mental state showed signs of strain. They became increasingly agitated and withdrawn. Their journal entries, included in the post, were a jumble of disjointed thoughts, fears, and dreams. July 2nd, 1964. It's happening. I can feel it. The ball moved. But they're watching me. I can't trust them. I can't trust anyone. The voices won't stop. Make them stop, please. Reading these entries, I felt a deep sense of unease. This wasn't just a story about a failed experiment. It was a glimpse into the challenges that can arise when pushing the boundaries of human potential. The anticipation for Deep Dive 22's next post was palpable. Each day I checked the forum, waiting for new insights into the fate of the volunteers in Project Telekinesis. When the update finally appeared, it was even more disturbing than I had imagined. According to Deep Dive 22, the final phase of the experiment took a tragic turn. The prolonged isolation, intense mental exercises, and the effects of Compound X began to take a heavy toll on the volunteers. Their mental states deteriorated rapidly leading to severe psychological issues. The once hopeful and curious individuals became shadows of their former selves. Dr. Cartwright's journal entries became increasingly bleak. August 5th, 1964. The strain is too much for most of the subjects. Many have stopped responding altogether. They sit in their rooms, motionless, their eyes vacant. It's as if their minds have shut down completely. We are losing them. August 12, 1964. Subject 23 is the only one showing signs of progress, but at what cost? The agitation is worsening. 
Subject 23 has become volatile and unpredictable. The telekinetic abilities are undeniable, but the psychological toll is severe. Deep Dive 22 described how the volunteers, one by one, fell into states of complete mental shutdown. They stopped talking, moving, or showing any emotion. It was as if their minds had simply given up, unable to cope with the relentless pressure and isolation. The scientists were at a loss. The project that had promised so much had instead resulted in a profound tragedy, except for one. Subject 23, despite the severe psychological strain, had managed to develop telekinetic abilities. The post included detailed accounts of small objects moving under Subject 23's focus. A pencil rolling across a table, a feather floating midair. These were not just random occurrences, but deliberate actions controlled by the mind. The scientists were both thrilled and horrified by this development. However, the success came at a steep price. Subject 23's journal entries revealed a person on the brink of madness, struggling to distinguish between reality and the hallucinations induced by Compound X. August 20th, 1964. I moved it again today. The pencil. It rolled across the table. I should be happy, but I can't shake the feeling that they're watching me. They whisper when I close my eyes. I can't sleep. I can't think. Why won't they stop? August 28th, 1964. I made the feather float today. It was beautiful, like a dream. But the voices are louder now. They tell me things, horrible things. I don't know what's real anymore. I'm scared. I just wanted to stop. As I read these entries, a chill ran down my spine. The idea of unlocking such a power only to lose one's sanity in the process was deeply unsettling. It was a stark reminder of the potential dangers of pushing the human mind beyond its limits. Deep Dive 22's post concluded with a grim statement. All but one of the volunteers ended up in permanent catatonia, their minds unable to cope with the strain. Subject 23 was the only one to achieve telekinesis, but at the cost of their mental stability. The project was deemed a failure and subsequently buried, the record sealed away from the public eye. The story of Project Telekinesis was both fascinating and horrifying. It painted a picture of human ambition taken to extreme lengths, with disastrous consequences. Despite the incredible achievement of telekinesis, the human cost was too high to justify the means. The story of Project Telekinesis had consumed my thoughts for weeks. I couldn't shake the images and stories from my mind, and I found myself discussing it with friends and family, trying to make sense of what I had uncovered. The consensus was clear. Whether true or not, it was a grim reminder of how far human curiosity and ambition could push ethical boundaries. Deep Dive 22's final post on the forum provided a sobering conclusion. It was an attempt to ground the story back in reality, reminding readers that while the details were compelling, they were still part of a conspiracy theory. No concrete proof had ever been provided, and many of the documents and accounts could easily have been fabricated or exaggerated. The post started with a disclaimer. Disclaimer, the following account is based on unverified sources and should be considered a conspiracy theory. While elements of the story are intriguing, readers are advised to approach it with a critical mind and not take it as factual history. Deep Dive 22 elaborated on the aftermath of the project. According to the final post, the facility in Montana was eventually abandoned. Officially, the project was never acknowledged, and all records were classified or destroyed. The surviving scientists and personnel were reassigned to other, more mundane tasks, and the volunteers were quietly institutionalized, their families compensated for their silence. Subject 23, the only successful telekinetic, remained an enigma. The Post claimed that they were taken to a separate facility for further study, but all subsequent records were either lost or heavily redacted. Some believe that Subject 23 continued to refine their abilities, possibly being used in covert operations, while others speculate that their mental state deteriorated to the point where they could no longer function. As much as the story intrigued me, I knew I had to take it with a grain of salt. 
The internet, especially the dark web, is rife with tales that blur the line between reality and fiction. It's easy to get swept up in the narrative, but without concrete evidence, it's all speculation. Reflecting on everything I had read, I couldn't help but feel a mix of awe and sadness. The idea that humans could potentially unlock such extraordinary abilities was thrilling, but the ethical implications and human cost were deeply troubling. If there was even a shred of truth to the story, it served as a stark warning about the dangers of unchecked scientific experimentation. I decided to step back from my exploration of the dark web for a while. The journey had been fascinating, but it had also taken a toll on my peace of mind. I returned to my usual browsing habits, diving into less disturbing topics and reconnecting with the more mundane aspects of life. Occasionally, I would revisit the forum, reading new posts and updates, but none captivated me quite like Project Telekinesis. It remained a haunting tale at the back of my mind, a reminder of the dark corners of human ambition and the potential consequences of pushing the boundaries of what we know. In the end, whether true or not, the story of Project Telekinesis left me with a deeper appreciation for the ethical considerations that must accompany scientific discovery. It's not just about what we can achieve, but also about the impact on those who are part of that journey. The pursuit of knowledge is noble, but it must always be balanced with compassion and respect for the human spirit. As I closed my laptop one final time on the topic, I took a deep breath and let go of the lingering unease. The dark web held many secrets, but it also taught me the importance of seeking truth with a critical eye and a cautious heart.